everyone. This is Dean L. Nebley with New Jersey Family Magazine, and I'm very happy today to have Dr. Diana Contreras with us. Um, Dr. Contreras is the chair of OBGYN and Women's Health at Morristown Medical Center, as well as medical director of the Women's Health Service Line at Atlantic Health System. Dr. Contreras, we're thrilled to have you, very grateful to have you to talk about something very important uh, topic of pregnancy and COVID and the COVID vaccine which is just on the minds of women um, who are pregnant. And it's such a, such a, we have so many questions about this topic. So we're really grateful for you, that you're joining us today to talk about it. Well, thank you for inviting me. This is a really important topic and um, we can't talk about it enough as far as I'm concerned. So happy to do anything I can to help talk about it. Thank you. So let's jump right in and talk about the fact that the CDC has always been urging pregnant women to be to get vaccinated, yet many have not. I know the numbers are improving, but still many are not being vaccinated. So what, in your view, is the risk of being pregnant without the COVID vaccine? So I think the risk is pretty significant. If there's a small chance you get COVID, but if you do get COVID while you're pregnant, COVID for the most part, pregnant patients do not do as well as non-pregnant patients should they get sick from COVID um, virus. And if they do get sick and they get hospitalized, there's a higher risk of moms ending up, unfortunately, dying. There's a higher risk of moms on the ventilator. Then there's a higher risk of premature birth because we have to deliver the baby earlier. And there's a higher risk of moms ending up in the ICU. So it's pretty significant of what can happen to moms if they get very sick from COVID. What do you think is the main reason so many aren't being vaccinated? They're reluctant. And a lot of them will say, you know, that they do believe in the science yet. Is it, do you think that the data is not long-term enough or do, is there a perception that there's not enough data? What do you think is the reason? So it's really interesting, right? Because pregnant moms worry so much about their babies that they're willing to put their health at risk because of the own unknown risk for their child. So I think it has a lot to do with several things. One is I do think there was misinformation when this all started. Two, I think it has to do with the fact that the trials were done and pregnant women were not included in the trials, which is the way they always do these trials. So it's not surprising. And three, I think it has to do with the fact that most women live in fear of hurting their baby in some way. So I do think that there's that. And with that, we'll never have enough data, right? No matter how many women get vaccinated, we could say we don't. But so much of what we do and know in pregnancy today is because we did it. We took it, the antibiotic, or we took the vaccine, and we now know that you know it's been a long-term effect. I think the fact that we don't have long-term data, 10-year data, that makes a lot of women concerned. But we do know there's a lot of pregnant women who have taken the vaccine, and they have not seen adverse outcomes during their pregnancy. So speaking of the fear that you alluded to as one of the reasons, I think some of the things I specifically, we specifically hear in terms of fear is fear of a miscarriage, fear of long-term effects on a woman's fertility if she chooses to conceive again. So can you address those fears, those specific sure. fears? Yeah, so let's start with the infertility or the fertility issue. There has been shown that there's absolutely no link between the vaccine and fertility issues. So I think that's become pretty clear. That was one of the misinformation issues that came forward in um, the vaccine early on. The big societies that deal with this, the, um, that have to do with infertility have said there's absolutely no, nothing for people to be concerned about. As far as miscarriages um, are concerned, there have been very large studies that show that there are a group of women that they studied who never got the vaccine and who were pregnant, and a group of women who got the vaccine and were pregnant. And the amount of miscarriages or stillbirths are the same in the, both groups. So we call that the background rate. So um, the vaccine did not have an impact on causing an increase in um, miscarriages. So we know that infertility and miscarriages are not related to the vaccine. What about overall safety of the vaccine in terms of, uh, is there any data about just, is it a safe vaccine overall? So that's really interesting that you asked that. So let's talk about in the regular population, right? So we know that the vaccine is 
really safe in the regular population. We've never had a vaccine that has been given to so many people where we actually know the outcomes. So it's pretty impressive what we do know about this vaccine already. We know that pregnant and not pregnant women have the same kind of outcomes related to the vaccine. As far as safety during pregnancy, I just looked this up and there's over 150,000 women who have taken the vaccine while they were pregnant. That's a pretty impressive number, and we have not seen um, adverse or bad outcomes to these moms. So really reassuring. That is really reassuring, and it's pretty striking to think about, you're right, the, no, the sheer number of people in this country who've been vaccinated at once, so there is a lot of data there. What about the vaccine and how it impacts babies after they're born? We know infants sure. and small children can't be vaccinated, so. I, I wanted to talk to you about breastfeeding and is that a way that a mother can protect her baby if she's So there's actually two ways when you think about it, right? So when you get the vaccine while you're pregnant, you can pass those antibodies on to your unborn baby so that when they're born, they have antibodies against the virus, which is really pretty impressive. And then as far as breastfeeding is concerned, you may be able to transfer antibodies through breast milk. So doing it actively to help um, protect your child against the virus, which I think is really amazing that moms can do so much for their unborn baby by taking the vaccine. What about um, if, you're, if you're pregnant and you have young children at home, younger than five? Right, so that's, that's gonna be, that's an interesting problem, right? Because you wanna protect your entire family, not just you and your unborn child, but also everyone else. So any mom, is a, who's unvaccinated is the potential at risk of, of getting COVID and then passing it on to the rest of her family. So just like if you were pregnant or I'm pregnant, you want to protect your, your little ones at home as well who can't get the vaccine. So you want to reduce the amount of, of risk that you take of getting the, vac, uh, the of COVID. So getting the vaccine would make a lot of sense. And what about women who are on the fence, as we talked about, they're reluctant, they change their mind well into their pregnancy. Is there a best time to get the vaccine? Is it ever too late? Um, so it's that? never too late. It's never too late. And I looked this up and I said, oh, wow, I thought this is a great line. ACOG says, get it as soon as you can. So, um, and ACOG is the American College of OBGYN. So there is no right trimester, there is no right time. The right time is as quickly as you can. And I thought that was a pretty great way of sending that message. Yeah, any time and it's never too late. So what about flu season is coming up and we all need our flu shots, I think especially pregnant women. Um, is there anything to timing in terms of if you're getting the COVID vaccine and the flu shot? You can do both at the same time. So it's okay. Um, and then you can do it at any time Otherwise, if you don't want to have it the same day, but you can get them both at the same time and you can get them both in the same time period. So we encourage you to get both. Flu with the pregnant patient is very serious as well. We take that very seriously. So any of these viruses that can make pregnant moms sick, we need to make sure women are getting the best things they can do to make themselves safe and their babies safe. And another um, vaccine booster is what I wanted to ask you about. Now that boosters are widely available, if, you, if you've gotten a COVID vaccine as a pregnant woman, should you be getting the booster? Yes, so the answer to that is yes. Um, the, what is recommended is it's after six months after you've completed the series. So um, whether you are a healthcare provider or a pregnant patient, the recommendation is to have a booster shot. That's great to hear. This is such a new thing. So I think there are a lot of questions around that. So if a pregnant woman um, has questions or a woman who's trying to conceive, what should her next step be in terms of making decisions about the vaccine to her? So I think my best advice is to become informed. And I think that um, we have to be careful about the sources that we use. Um, the American College of OBGYN has a very um, nice website that is easy to read and understand, and um, I recommend that one highly. The CDC also has a very good website, and the areas, if you just type in COVID vaccine and pregnancy, it will come right up, the CDC and ACOG are major ones. And then I think if you trust your OBGYN, 
I think it's very reasonable to talk to them about it. But I think every woman has to make decisions on her own. But I think it's really impo important to make informed decisions with objective science and information. That's why I direct people to those websites because it's really important that people should know what's really being recommended by the national organizations. Really great advice. In addition to your doctor, arming yourself with that objective data is so important. We really appreciate the time oh, and expertise that you've given us today. Um, we're so grateful you joined us today. Thank you so much, Dr. Contreras. I thank you. It's a really important topic. Happy to answer any questions for people. I think it's uh, really important that women um, empower themselves so that they're making the right choices for them and for their families. That's a great message. Thank you again for joining us. And for more information on the COVID-19 vaccine, please go to AtlanticHealth.org slash COVID vaccine.